selected this case um, for the uh, two particular reasons. He presented with seizure, uh, so emergency department was not very sure about the diagnosis, and uh, it was a positive circulation with very high uh, NIH score. So uh, I'll start with my case. So that's, this is a case of post posterior circulation infarct. And uh, we'll go to next slide. So this is a story of 36-year-old female. She is an entrepreneur and she runs uh, at least six, uh, multiple preschools in Pune city and around uh, and very ambitious uh, female. Uh, she presented uh, at Sunday morning, 4.30 a.m. with a, a history of... Uh, sudden loss of consciousness, jerky movement, and clothing from mouth, uh, as, as noted by her sister. There was no previous history of any fever, cough, chest pain. Uh, she, she, uh, before sleeping, she was absolutely all right, and she had that episode of seizure. So they brought her emerg uh, in our emergency department immediately. On arrival, so uh, on arrival, uh, when patient presented to our uh, emergency department, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, yeah, in her history, she was not having any history of previous diabetes, hypertension. There was no history of any chronic uh, medical illness. She uh, refused, I mean, family refused any addiction. She, uh, positive history was, she was on uh, oral contraceptive pills. So, uh, next slide. And on arrival, uh, hemodynamically, she was stable, 120, 70, 86 pulse. Um, her GCS on arrival, she was drowsy and confused. So E3, V2, and M5, and uh, she was moving all four limbs that time. Uh, she was obeying verbal command, but there was some uh, right-sided facial human type of a palsy, and her um, right plantar was up going. So whether it was a post stage or a stroke, we decided to go ahead with MRI scan. So we'll go to the next slide. Uh, can you play this video, please? So this is uh, her diffusion uh, scan. So there was cerebellar infarct, bilateral thalamic infarct, uh, matching with the ADC diffusion, uh, ADC restriction as well. So uh, it was an infarct, and uh, this scan was done around within 30 to 40 minutes from arrival of the patient. We decided, still she was in window period, so um, we decided to uh, lyse the patient. And uh, next slide. We thrombolyze the patient. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. Uh, after thrombolysis, there was uh, still a worsening of the uh, condition of the patient, and her GCS dropped to almost uh, four. Uh, this is her uh, pre DSA pro um, video. If uh, if we can run this video. I mean, there was no motor response. Uh, I mean, this uh, she, she collapsed literally in front of us in emergency room. Immediate CT was done to rule out any bleed. There was no bleed. And we shifted her to cath lab. Uh, as, as evidently, uh, as suggested by MRI, it was a posterior circulation basilar artery stroke. So we will move to next slide. Yeah, uh, we thrombolyze her with tenacteplase. Uh, I was suspecting large vessel stroke, so we choose uh, tenacteplase in her case. 12 milligram bolus was given. There was no inter, uh, no improvement uh, as we, we activate stroke code. So intervention team also get activated. Uh, Dr. Leomish Birud um, is my colleague who, who is a neurointerventionalist. And uh, we shifted her to DSA. And we'll go to next slide. So uh, as expected, it was showing uh, top of basilar you know, occlusion. So, uh, by uh, next slide. So, um, he, he, he was able to do this um, recanalization in 20 minutes. Uh, he and, uh, was able to achieve TC score of uh, three good circulation post uh, thrombectomy. So, total door to uh, this TC score 33 time was around uh, one, and one, one hour, 10 minutes or so. Uh, we'll go to next slide. Uh, this is a thrombus taken out. Please, next. 
and uh, this was a video recorded after shifting that patient from cath lab to icu urmila kashi hai ha tu chal dawa tu chal ujwa tu chal dawa pa lo ujwa pa lo good ikade pa ujwa side la pa ठीक है डोले उगड़ पूर्ण डोले उगड़े नेक्स्ट लाइड सो आई मीन शी वॉज मच बेटर कंपेर टू प्री थ्रोमेटॉमी स्टेट एंड दिस वॉज ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स सिटी कैन वी रन सो सम सेरेबेलर इन्फॉक्ट वॉज इविडेंट The thalamus appears to be salvaged. Left-sided thalamic small impact is visible, but uh, most of the uh, parenchyma uh, was salvaged. So, uh, if uh, we can go to next slide. Uh, so, post thrombolysis uh, and uh, after the thrombectomy, we carried out workup. She presented to us with an episode of seizure. So, I was suspecting some embolic mechanism. Two D echo uh, was normal. Transesophageal echo also was attempted. that was normal we uh, we did polter first that was normal then later on uh, loop recorder was all, loop recorder was also um, did uh, we did it in her case that also turned out to be normal so peripheral smear for any hematological pathology sickle cell was normal anti phospholipid profile uh, was normal and uh, later on post um, three month follow thrombophilia profile we did there was um, that thrombophilia profile was absolutely normal so um, there were no apparent uh, risk factor in this case only risk factor was uh, we could find out was in next slide uh, that she had a history of migraine and possible risk factor she was on oral contraceptive uh, pill estrogen containing oral contraceptive pill pill so we discharge i mean later on we discharged her on ecosprin double anti platelet and 40 mg of atorvastatin and her migraine uh, we are, we are treating her migraine with propranolol and amitriptyline and she is doing good uh, we'll go to next slide so this was uh, her post discharge uh, opd follow up kay tras to tum sab ka tumhara ha so he had some dysarthria na kar rahe kar touch your note kar but on left side minimal left sided attacks yeah finger no finger was slightly injured on left side salun that pan ya reshe vatti sarva chalay and and she improved i mean that uh, modified ranking score uh, at this stage probably for uh, is around we can maximally say one she and uh, three months down the line uh fortunately she is having no deficit and she is back to her uh, normal life we can go to next slide that the so that was a, a case interesting case and uh, despite of uh, high uh, high uh, nih score uh, and we decided to go ahead with um, thrombe thrombolysis fail thrombolysis then thrombectomy and fortunately uh, she responded to thrombectomy it was and uh, because of stroke code probably the um, entire team was uh, available so despite of uh, confusional presentation with caesar post confusion of postictal versus uh, vascular neurodeficit uh, scan mri based um, thrombolysis and thrombectomy was achieved so uh, that is my case sir. and answer uh, if you allow i like to uh, mention about my stroke code uh, as sir was saying we are also uh, doing mri based uh, thrombolysis uh initially we started with ct based but uh, now i'm doing mri based there were i mean one one unusual problem i was facing with ct scan uh, after doing ct scan patient sometime were asking for a report and of course that ct sometime may not show is reported as normal and so patient were refusing that there is no uh, ct is normal so i will not go ahead with this uh, costly injection that was one issue we faced in some cases Uh, we could literally show them infarct in uh, mri 
second sir uh, as sir mentioned b2000 b2000 value we we uh, have um, uh, with our radiology setup uh, we have developed a stroke uh, um, stroke code mri so in that first sequence um, taken is b2000 sir uh, we don't take b1000 value we directly take b2000 b2000 uh, is is almost like 30 to 45 seconds shorter compared to normal b uh, so that time is also saved b2000 diffusion then we take flare we take gre and then we take angio sequence that entire uh, angio we go for uh, brain angio neck angio uh, is not covered in that um, stroke code mri so these four sequences we are able to finish in 8 8 to 9 minutes time sir and simultaneously we uh, carry out um, cons um, family counseling we can show them this is a stroke this is Uh, simultaneously in MR console room, and uh, that that is helping our team to cut short actually uh, the time spent on counseling. So we are probably compromising uh, time spent uh, on counseling uh, versus uh, uh, MRI time, sir. And second, we are not having uh, we are having sixteen slice CT scan. So uh, MR uh, means CT perfusion, uh, CT multiphase CT angio is difficult in that, and it was taking longer time. and some of radiology department were reluctant to give contrast without creatinine despite of multiple attempts they were not convinced so these are few reasons sir we we shifted from ct based to uh, mr based sir yeah thank you sir thank you thank you dr bhushan joshi for your uh, excellent case um yeah that's what uh, uh, i'll just start the discussion um thing is um, That's what you said. Uh, thrombolysis and thrombectomy. Of course, uh, if it is a large vessel occlusion, your thrombolysis alone is not going to help. Somehow, you have to retrieve the clot. Such a large clot, I don't think you can uh, lyse it with the uh, thrombolysis itself. <laughs> you need to have uh, thrombectomy. But if you go through the basic trial, which was uh, uh, I mean released recently, they say all the post-surgical strokes, uh, best medical management, BMM is uh, as good as. Uh, anything else thrombectomy may not be necessary but practically as you said such a large clots i <laughs> think uh, thrombolysis and thrombectomy that's the way you rather uh, uh, retrieve the clot and uh, get the patient better one thing second thing i wonder uh, did you have pontain in fact i think i missed the uh, no, first mri no sir no it's no. only cerebral and uh, thalamus no sir it was not demonstrated in uh, initial mri there was uh, cerebellar infarct and bilateral thalamic infarct and no pontain infarct no so brain stem was free, uh, preserved in her case it was yeah, not that's sir maybe that is one of the reasons uh, for the better recovery yes uh, yes brain stem pons yes. is also involved of course still they recover but uh, might take little longer time mm. in the mm. processing yes. uh, um, i within 4 uh, 5 hours it might take 24 hours or uh, a week or so for her uh, to get better improvement if the pons was not affected so improvement uh, slightly better in this case and the second thing i would like to say see when this history of ocp of course you got it later and the stroke uh, um, i mean and the seizure what we thought think initially is uh, venous thrombosis venous thrombosis yes uh, yeah venous thrombosis rather than uh, acute ischemic stroke yes uh, in your case um, uh, for the mri proved it's only uh, i believe there was no venous clots isn't it I mean, mm, uh, there was no venous thrombosis in any of the sinuses. Mm, no, sir. We went through the case. No. I mean, venogram was not done, but yeah, of course. I mean, just based on the flow voids. No, sir. Venous flow no. voids were normal, sir. No, uh, that's what we think of because uh, OCP and uh, seizure. Yeah, otherwise, uh, I think uh, went on well. It's a good case. Uh, I can't argue it. Professor Jainta Rai. uh thank you sir and dr joshi yes sir uh, you gave a very good point about uh, doing mr based thrombolysis <laughs> yes, i think sir. i never thought about it <laughs> yes so, i am mean. yeah interesting and i i recall a story uh, narrated by one of my good friend dr bijay sharma from singapore they mm -hmm. thrombolyzed a patient based on ct and yes. ct was normal then post thrombolysis the patient was back to ni80 and the, the second ct was also normal so the insurance refused to pay but there is no stroke mm. why should they pay 
So he had to write a long letter to justify the treatment. So it is good point that you do an MRI and show them the diffusion. And, and secondly, uh, I congratulate you for doing this excellent case, which is a, a glaring example of the beauty of thrombectomy in, yes. in case of uh, this kind of big stroke, especially basal at top, when there is a very high mortality and morbidity in this patient if they remain untreated. So this is the, the, the one of the best examples of this uh, treatment modality, which yes. has definitely changed our uh, management. And uh, I was very, uh, I mean, surprised about not getting any uh, clue of the stroke mechanism in this young lady. Yes, sir. Sometimes, uh, yeah, we do find that uh, there is no background cause or any any other disease. So it's really intriguing sometimes. But some um, arrhythmias or something, we don't know. But young people may get this kind of embolic stroke. And when you find no reason at all. So, yeah, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt. So we did loop recorder for uh, I mean seven days that uh, in search of arrhythmias, uh, but in seven days recording was not showing any arrhythmia, sir. That's right. So yeah, I mean we, we know that in, in 20, almost in twenty five percent cases they still remain cryptogenic. Yes. Sir. So uh, anyway, very interesting and very well managed. Dr. Mukherjee. Sir. Uh, congratulations. Uh, this was really very well done. And as we as rightly brought out by Dr. Jain, uh, basilar artery thrombosis is catastrophic if not treated and very timely treated and uh, such a big long thrombus brought out. Uh, congratulations to you and your team member who did the intervention. Yes. Having said that, uh, I think uh, this case also exemplifies teamwork. That is what is very important. And and the need to have a stroke team at 24 into 7 everywhere. I think that is what is required. And stretching this far, we all hospitals should have a stroke team. And I think more important is, and I'm going beyond the scope of this discussion, uh, the technical discussion, I'm looking at the comprehensive uh, and the primary stroke centers. We need to have large cities like Delhi. What I'm told, I'm giving an example. There are almost 1,000 strokes every day, but I think only 10% receive the proper treatment. Nine person do not receive the proper treatment. I'm sure this is true for all other cities, mid size, small size or big size. Right. Uh, it's time for all of us who are stroke, uh, who are interested in stroke to develop stroke calls where stroke, at least the bolus of simple handheld CT scan or a mobile CT scan or some other mechanism is developed where the CT scan is at least done, transmitted to the primary stroke center or the comprehensive, at least the bolus is given by a stroke physician. You don't have to be a neurologist to give stroke. I think three months training to a good physician who's interested in neurology uh, will be good enough to prevent the disability because of stroke. See, cardiac arrest, cardiac things, you either recover or you don't recover. But in stroke, you're debilitated for your rest of your life. I think we all need to put our head, have a comprehensive interconnected stroke center. Supposing it happens in corner A, it doesn't matter. He should be admitted in A. It doesn't matter. The economics of it can be looked after by the government or the, by the federal structure. The stroke is worse than trauma. Like trauma is now getting integrated. There is national trauma. There is a, uh, everyone. Like in Delhi, there's something called Dhaka. So ever who is, belongs to Delhi, is a citizen of Delhi, if he gets admitted in any private hospital, the government pays it at CGHS rate. Same thing should be done for stroke. I feel... We all are duty bound to spouse this cause. I think that's uh, what the message that I would like to give. And thank you very much for presenting such a wonderful.